Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the owner of Professional Fleet. Uh, today we're going to discuss and show how to do a proper rear uh, brake job. It's going to be a rear disc. So this vehicle has rear pads and rear rotors, um, not drums and brake shoes. So basic tools. Um, you're going to need a, a ratchet, a three-stripe ratchet of some sort. Uh, you can use air ratchets or uh, just a regular ratchet. Uh, for tools or for sockets, you're going to need a socket to remove the lug nuts, which is usually going to be 18 or 19 or millimeter or three quarter. You'll usually need a 13 mil, a 14 mil, and 15 mil socket, <clears throat> a pair of pliers, a regular screwdriver, uh, just a basic size normal hammer works. And we're going to use this for removing the tires since we have air here. Uh, you can also use a breaker bar, a four way, uh, you know, a half inch drive ratchet, whatever you choose to get the tire out. Uh, some brake clean to wash down the, uh, the rotors, the pads, everything before we put it back together, clean everything up. Uh, we'll need some Loctite. This will be put on the threads of the bolts when we go back together. Uh, from the manufacturer, there is a Loctite on all your bolts for your brakes so they don't heat up and then the bolts back themselves back off and then have your brakes fall off the vehicle. So for safety reasons, you always want to use a Loctite or thread sealant on the bolts going back together. On the slides, because the caliper slides back and forth, and they'll get rusty and dirty, and that'll stop the pads from being able to move correctly and stop your vehicle. We'll either use a brake silicone or another product called anti seats that we put on the slides of the uh, caliper. And we'll go over what these parts are individually so you'll know where to apply these and how to apply these. So you can do this either with an air tool or the four way. We have air, so today we're going to use air. We'll tear off. These rotors are decent enough. The brakes haven't been grinding or um, they're not solid rust. So we can reuse these rotors if you need to. Uh, today we're going to reuse these rotors. Uh, normally I'd replace them. Uh, they're cheap enough and inexpensive enough where most of the time it's better to replace them than trying to uh, machine them or save them. Uh, so we're, but we're going to save these today. So we're just going to wash them down, clean them up. We're going to crack our bolts loose. Crack the bottom one loose. All right, now this is the caliper bolt and the caliper slide. As you can see, there's some grease on there. Um, they look to be in good shape, good condition, not a lot of rust. We can reuse these. Uh, we'll clean the threads up really good, and then we'll re-lube uh, them up when we're done. Uh, now we're going to remove the caliper, which sometimes we can remove that um, by uh, either a hammer or a screwdriver or pulling off by hand, whichever you need to do. Um, this particular vehicle um, actually has the pushback style pistons in it, so this one will not require the special tool. Uh, many of these vehicles require the special tool. This one, however, doesn't. Um, so this one we can just push back with a nice set of uh, channel locks or pliers, or we can use a C-clamp. So the caliper on both sides, and just carefully push it back. And you want to make sure it goes back nice and smooth and there's no you know, skipping, hopping, no forced movement required. They should go back nice and smooth and steady. And you want to push it all the way back in. All right, so piston's now pushed back. Pull it out. We can see now that it's nice and flush with the caliper. So we got the caliper off and set that aside. Um, try not to let it hang or dangle. You definitely want to try to keep it so it's loose and the hose isn't, there's no pulling on the hose. So you don't damage the brake hose. Um, now we got to remove the other pad. And uh, we have, this is the caliper mount. <clears throat> we'll want to take these two bolts out. <clears throat> now these ones will be on really tight. These are locked down very hard. You want to make sure these ones don't come off. They're usually going to be on there a lot tighter than the caliper bolts. So we can take some pressure, get those loose. <clears throat> so crack that one loose. And then we want to crack the bottom one loose. I never do one without doing the other. Now, if we were just doing brake pads, we wouldn't need to remove this bracket or the rotor. We can leave it there. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the full brake job just like you were changing uh, the, you know, the rotors and pads together. <clears throat> All right, so those are loosened up. Turn them by hand. And there's one of the mount bolts. And uh, this one's been apart before. We can tell because they didn't put thread sealant back on there. And there should be a thread sealant on there. And they did come apart a lot easier because of that as well. 
Um, so the same thing, take the bottom one off. So we we'll want to make sure we clean this up, just spray it down, get a lot of the rust and stuff off. If you're replacing these parts, um, just make sure they get pushed down correctly and installed back in. Uh, make sure your boots aren't torn. Make sure there's no rust and debris inside here. And then we'll go through, put the sil you know, silicone pad slide uh, material back on here so that they'll slide nicely. And then we'll clean these up and put some Loctite on those bolts. And then we'll want to pop the rotor off. Now, if you're reusing the rotor, we're going to pretty much leave it alone because a lot of rust will build up here. And if you touch this, it can then cause a vibration or a pulsation and allow the rotor to sit in a wrong position on the car. So if we're going to, if we're going to remove it to replace, you can just hammer on it and break it loose right here. Um, just make sure you don't hit the um, studs or the lug nuts. So we'll knock this up and the rotor will slide right off. And there's our brake rotor. Spray the brake shoes down. Spray this down, give it a little bath, both front and back. And then we're gonna put this one back on. Um, if you were using new rotors, you'd wanna give them a really good bath with the brake clean. Uh, reason being is they put a, a glue-like substance on the rotor when it's in the box. So during shipment, it can't rust as it sits on the shelf or get shipped from wherever it's coming from. Um, since we're not doing that here, it's not as important to wash down. We just wanna keep some of the brake dust and get some of the you know, debris off before we put our new pads back on. So, so we're gonna wanna put a little Loctite on our threads here. Um, I recommend not using red Loctite. You're gonna to wanna to use either blue or green. Those are different levels of hardness. And red Loctite is like a permanent one that pretty much you'll never get back off without heat. Um, I like to use blue Loctite on bolts, which is pretty much what they use anyways is blue Loctite. So let's put a little dab of blue Loctite on here. And just looking for enough to uh, fill the threads up. We're gonna tighten them back up and for this, I'm going to use um, the ratchet to show you two different methods here. You can put it back together the socket or you can use a ratchet. Get a nice good torque on them. You don't want to strip them, but you want them nice and tight. Spray it really thick and let it get on there nice and thick and dry up. Let them sit about five minutes and dry. Get them locked back down in there, clip them in place. And then the back one here, we'll get that one locked back in. Make sure we get this here back in place. And we're back in. Now we're getting ready to put the caliper back on. What we're gonna wanna do is get our slides, get them all cleaned up, and we're gonna put those back in and lube them up. Um, I like silicone, it lasts longer, it works better, it stays on longer, and there's less likelihood of water getting in and causing a problem. And then I like to put a little dab of the blue thread sealant on these as well. So we got thread sealant on the threads and we got silicone sealant on the slides. And we'll put these in by hand, just like last time. So we'll grab our caliper. <clears throat> there's not really much to clean up here on these style calipers. So we'll slide her back on. Get our boots lined up in there. Use a ratchet or a wrench on this, doesn't matter either way. Um, you can get more leverage with a ratchet than what you can with a wrench. And you're less likely to strip off a bolt if you use a ratchet versus a wrench. Um, brakes are basically done here. So last thing we're going to do is just double check everything, uh, make sure everything turns from the binding, uh, make sure your caliper slides nice and free, all the bolts are tight, everything's here, all the parts you took apart are back on the vehicle and you have no extra parts. Um, we're going to put the wheel on now and there's a couple things you can do here. If you're reusing the old rotor, um, it's not a bad idea to try to clean off some of this rust so that the tire mates to it well. Uh, if you're not going to do that and you get a new rotor, um, that's one less step you have to take. And thread everything on. If you need to use a socket, use a socket. But get them all hand started and threaded. And that concludes the way to do a proper, correct rear uh, brake job with rotors and pads.